Welcome, Ben Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran AK The Laird here and uh, today I've got a bit of a special video for you because this one is to celebrate hitting 15,000 subscribers on YouTube which I've literally just done um, as I'm filming this video. I first of all of course want to um, thank all of you for um, making that happen because it wouldn't have happened without you know you liking subscribing and watching my videos and sharing them in groups and sharing them on your websites and you know i do see that my, my my videos get shared a lot in different places so thank you to everyone who does that and you know thanks to everyone for my support i mean one of the greatest things about this this channel is is my my audience because i have you know a big group of you you probably all know who you are who you know literally post and comment on every single video and get involved and and uh, have helped make this community that um, I've built up around my channel, you know, on the community tab where we have the, you know, the posts and the polls and the chats and you give feedback and help me, uh, you know, mould what I'm actually doing with this channel in terms of the content, what I'm going to cover next and things like that. And, you know, it's great um, that you all get involved so much in, in, in this channel and that's what, you know, why I can't take all the credit for making this to 15,000 subscribers because you know all of you my viewers have helped so much um, with making that happen um, but you might have seen talking of polls that uh, a few weeks back I did a poll asking what I should do when I hit 15,000 subscribers and the winner um, was actually you wanted me to list my favourite games but I couldn't think of a good way to do it because I found it too hard you know, to make a top 10 or even a top 20 of my all-time favourite games. I was just finding it really difficult. I was thinking of a, maybe a slightly different way I could do that um, in terms of, you know, maybe just, you know, limiting it to consoles or computers or to a certain decade, like my greatest games in the 80s or something. Um, and I couldn't think of a good way to do it. I mean, I know I've done my favourite arcade games on the channel before, um, but yeah, uh, I couldn't think of a particularly amazing way to do that. And I was arming and ahhing. And then... Um, just uh, like yesterday, basically, the big news broke um, about Atari acquiring uh, Intellivision, the um, the copyright to the name, the trademark, um, all of their their games that weren't licensed games, of course, um, from the Intellivision catalog and the M Network library for the twenty six hundred. Um, they've worked with Intellivision before, so a lot of people found it really surprising. It wasn't so much of a surprise to me. Because we all knew that in television productions were in trouble, which is why the Amico console hasn't come out. I'm not going to go into that absolute dumpster fire here. But um, yeah, um, but Atari had, had worked with them on doing some stuff for the Amico, uh, like Breakout and Missile Command, I think were two of the titles they were doing for it. Uh, Digital Eclipse, which of course Atari now own, were working on Amico games. And also... Um, some of the re more recent Atari flashback consoles have had M Network games on them as well. So obviously Atari already had a kind of working relationship there. So I'm guessing that when um, they, you know they decided they needed the money and they were going to sell off that IP, um, that's why they went to Atari first. It, it made the most sense, um, especially where Atari even reinvented themselves recently, very much focusing on you know their their retro value, so to speak, and updating those old games in terms of the recharge series and re-releasing 2600 games as well as releasing new 2600 games under the Atari name as well and of course this thing behind me the Atari 2600 plus the amazing modern update of the 2600 which uses real cartridges but can connect to an HDMI TV so um, yeah, it just happens to be the shop behind me you can actually see there's loads of Jaguar games here um, some of my Jaguar collection some other stuff so uh, that's one reason why I'm standing in front of these shelves in particular in my office and actually to the side of me there is uh, that picture is of my um, my Retro Gamer article on the Atari 7800 for its uh, 30th anniversary, which was the cover article, um, really big feature um, within the magazine. So my wife had it framed and put on the wall for me, which was uh, a lovely thing to do. Uh, she did that some years ago, um, but I digress. Uh, but yeah, that news breaking made me think, now maybe that's what I could do for my Patreon, not Patreon, my 15,000 subscriber even video. I'm thinking about Patreon video that I'm doing as well. Um, 
And uh, I thought, yeah, maybe, you know, you guys would like to hear my opinion on that. Because actually in a couple of the groups I'm in, uh, where I was talking about it, lots of people were asking my opinion. And I kept actually repeating the same post over and over again. I copied and pasted it in a load of places because uh, people kept asking the same thing. And that got me thinking even more. And I thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's make a video. It's, it's a topical thing at the moment. Um, and lots of people sort of are wondering really what they're going to do next. And uh, people are fascinated by the fact that, you know, Atari's biggest rival when they had the 2600 was in course in television. So, you know, they've taken over their biggest rival. It's a big thing. You know, a lot of people said it was like WWE buying WCW. Um, or Nintendo buying Sega. I don't think it's quite as big as that, but yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, so yeah, I mean, two things that people pointed out, which I'll, I'll start on for this um, this video is, uh, lots of people said, wouldn't it be great if they A, bought Coleco, and B, they bought um, Odyssey, Magnavox Odyssey 2 stuff, because then that would bring a whole um, period, you know, the, the main consoles from that period, four main consoles from the late 70s, early 80s, um, together um, under one brand and that would be really cool and I wanted to kind of go into that because it's an interesting point so first of all Coleco I don't think that's going to happen because if you actually look at the ColecoVision library in detail which I found out very much when I went to make a video looking at ColecoVision exclusives because it has almost no exclusives pretty much every game Coleco re released to the ColecoVision was a license of some kind mostly arcade licenses but then even the ones that weren't arcade licenses i mean for example cabbage patch kids coleco owned cabbage patch kids that was their own ip but the game itself was konami's athletic land so they just repurposed some existing existing game that they already had which they were probably already going to release on the intellivision so release a um the license loads of stuff of konami because it was really easy to port the um msx versions that konami had already done because the hardware was virtually identical so that's one reason why there was all those Konami games on the MSX. Uh, sorry, in the ColecoVision, because they came from the MSX. Um, so I don't think the ColecoVision thing will happen. I mean, apart from buying the Coleco name, there, there's no value there. There's there's no games. Um, there's really not very much at all. I mean, OK, Atari bought the Stern IP, and I don't think there's anything Stern on the ColecoVision either, actually. So I don't think that helps there either. But... But yeah, so I don't think there's any value by Coleco. I think that's this point, this discussion to be had, to be honest. There's nothing there for them. Um, second point, Magnavox Odyssey 2. Now, this is interesting because a lot of people don't realise that Atari already owned the the all the IP for Philips Magnavox um, because they were part of Infogrames. And Infogrames bought... Um, Philips Studios um, at one point in the um, in the late 90s I believe and thusly acquired all of the Magnavox um, and Odyssey IP and games uh, video pack name trademarks all of that as well as well as Odyssey as well as the uh, all the CDI names trademarks games so everything Philips had created plus their PC games that had released and stuff as well all of that, Atari owned all of that for years and just sat on it and did nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. Um, and uh, when, so you might remember that some years ago, they they were in trouble, Atari. They actually um, called in uh, administrators. And in order to save the company, uh, they they sold off a ton of their IP. Like for example, they sold Battlezone's Rebellion, probably most famously. Um, they sold off a lot of their accolade and microprose ip which they owned because again from the infogrames things infogrames took over so many companies um you wouldn't believe and so atari thusly because they were infogrames renamed um owned all of this this ip from all these companies and then they sold off some more to uh, a couple of other companies uh, because they also owned ocean software ip gremlin software ip uh, and Beam Software, um, who later became known as Melbourne House, they sold off. They had a load of their IP as well, um, and they sold off loads of that. Some of it to Pico Interactive, as you may know, which is why a lot of that stuff appears on those Pico carts for the Evercade, and why Pico have released um, games for the Jaguar, like Impossible and Switchblade and Head Over Heels. Um, the ST ports and 
Then some of it was sold to a UK company called uh, Pixel Games under their, I think the, the company that actually bought it were called Subvert, but it's all part of the exact same company who were all part of Andrews UK, owned by Paul Andrews. Um, I used to publish my books through him, um, you might remember. And Paul Andrews is also one half of the company Retro Games Limited, who make the Commodore 64 Mini and A500 Mini, all of that. So he owns a ton of that IP and he actually bought all of the Philips IP from Atari. So he now owns it and he actually did has released a video pack collection for Steam. But that's literally the only thing he's done with it. He did tell me many years ago that he planned to make a video pack mini um, with all the games on it. But he never did it for some reason. I don't really know why because I think that would have been something quite cool to have. Maybe with all this intro, you know, interested retro stuff and the fact he's already done the 64 Mini and the, the A400 Mini, um, uh, which is a terrible name and not a great product in my opinion. I think they messed that up royally, but that's a whole nother video. Um, yeah, hopefully maybe he will do more with it. But I mean, there is a, I mean, everyone said he might sell it back to Atari, possibly. He might do if he gets offered good money for it. Um, he's a businessman after all and... Uh, I can't see why he wouldn't take the money if it was if Atari offered him something decent for it. It's unlikely, but I mean, Atari did actually just buy back um, all of the Accolade IP because if you remember they did that big announcement about how now they owned Bubsy again. Um, although a lot of people didn't seem to realise that they owned Bubsy before because they owned all the Accolade IP um, because again, Accolade were one of the companies that Infogrames bought. Hence why Atari did like the Test Drive Unlimited games because that was Accolade IP. Uh, so yes, that was that. So they have bought back um, a load of IP that they did own. Um, so yeah, it, it, I mean, it's possible that they might buy back some of the stuff they'd sold off previously. Uh, who knows? But yeah, I mean, that would be cool to see if they did buy back all the video and Odyssey IP. But I don't think that 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 will happen. Now, in terms of what IP they should acquire next, if they're going to acquire more, because they do seem to be acquiring tons of it, and they they bought a load of studios as well, most notably. Of course, Digital Eclipse, who did the Atari 50 collection. And I'm sure Digital Eclipse will now do something similar for the Intellivision. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so what IP should they acquire next? That's the question, because people have obviously bought up Coleco and Magnavox, but I don't think they're, they're, they're the IP that Atari should be going after. The Atari, the IP that they should be going after is all of the Atari games IP. Because then that would bring all of the Atari stuff back together under one roof again, which hasn't happened since. Funny enough, Warner Brothers owned it um, in the early 80s, and it's Warner Brothers now who own all of that Atari IP, but have done nothing with it. And Warner Brothers came to acquire it again, um, and Warner Brothers have got this um, unbelievable relationship with the Atari brand, really, because they they owned it, um, sold off the consumer division to Atramel, then they sold off the arcade division to Namco, um, and then they ended up buying it back um, off Namco. So they ended up selling it and buying it back. Um, and then eventually Midway bought it, bought it out. Um, and, you know, WMS Industries, who had they ended up having uh, the Midway, Bally, uh, Williams Electronics and Atari Games brands, among others. There was others in there as well, like Leyland, Trade West. Because um, they were all, all became part of WMS Industries because of them buying Midway. Uh, they subsequently ended up shutting Atari games down just to focus on the Midway brand, which kind of made sense. But yeah, but um, Warner Brothers now own Midway because when Midway went bust, they bought them, uh, mainly to get their hands on the IP and more than anything to get their hands on Mortal Kombat. That's what they really wanted. And that's really the only thing they've done with that IP. There's some odd things. like I think they did a Paperboy mobile game, which was crap. They did that gauntlet for PC and PlayStation. That was actually really good. Um, and when they did that new Gauntlet game, a lot of people are like, oh, they're going to start, you know, doing uh, new versions of all these old games. But they never did. That was the only thing they really did. They never did much else with it. The only thing they've really done with all that Midway IP is, is new Mortal Kombat games. We've not seen anything like, you know, Smash TV would have been a cool one to bring back, for example, from uh, Williams or NARC. Um, there's so much good Atari games IP as well. Um, I mean, Rampage. We got a movie, but it'd be strange if we didn't get a new Rampage game, which is quite strange. Why did they not? Why did they not bring Rampage back? 
you know, there's, there's so much they could have done with all that stuff. But I certainly, whether they would sell off all the Midway IP at the same time as well and just hang on to Mortal Kombat, that could be interesting as well if they just went and bought all of that old WMS Industries um, stuff off uh, Warner Brothers. But certainly I do think they should go to them and say, you know, how much do you want the Atari games brand? Not only because it would bring the Atari stuff back under one roof. So they would own all of the Atari arcade games plus all the Atari consumer stuff. But you think about the possibilities in terms of the stuff that they already own. For example, especially the Lynx. Because a Lynx Mini or anything Lynx related isn't right without the arcade conversions. They don't own the Epic stuff. Funny enough, the Epic stuff is owned by Darren Melbourne, who's the other half of Retro Games Limited. So Paul Andrews is one half, Darren Melbourne is the other half. Darren Melbourne owns all the Epic IP. So he owns all the Lynx games, which is why you'll see Pixel Games UK, Paul Andrews Company, have re-released loads of the Epic stuff on Steam, and that's because of that relationship. Um, but yeah, I, I digress again for a moment. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you released a Lynx Mini or something with Lynx related, if they owned all that Atari Games IP again, they could be putting on Stun Runner, um, you know, uh, Hydra, Cyberball, APB, all of those great Atari Games arcade conversions, Clax appeared on the links they would then be able to re-release all of those because they would own all of that ip there's there's some of that for the 2600 i mean clax came out in the 2600 as well so, so obviously another um old atari games ip um uh same with there's, there's probably there's, there's a version of clax is 7800 as well so that, you know there'd be possibilities to re-release some of that stuff as well um road blasters paperboy you know, there's so much of that stuff that, that a great IP that Atari had. Marble Madness, um, Tubin, uh, I'm trying to think, Gauntlet, of course, which I've already mentioned. Um, that's 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 their IP. Uh, there's, 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 there's absolutely tons of it. Um, you know, Primal Rage is another good one from from their, their later years. Um, San Francisco Rush, another um, later one. Um, but there is absolutely tons of that Atari games IP that, that I think would be very valuable to the modern Atari and they could do some great things with it, especially in terms of the recharge series and stuff as well. But yeah, that's where I think they should go. Um, I think that's really in terms of Atari. I think that's the only IP now that they should be acquiring is, is um, that arcade IP. There's probably a few more other arcade companies would be interested in them snap up. But I just think that should be their, their focus now is to acquire all the old Atari games IP. But I'd love to know what all you think. Um, so I hope you enjoyed my views on, on what the modern Atari should do in terms of IP acquisitions. I thank you all once again for your support and helping me to get to 15,000 subscribers. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I love to hear your opinions. Um, and as always, I've been the Laird and I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon. Bye bye.